There is a new Jurassic movie in the works, with the release date now set on July 2nd, 2025. And there is a lot of excitement. Although some people would rather see the franchise go extinct. What started in 1993 with a masterpiece quickly devolved into paint by numbers gone wrong. And over the course of five sequels, many mistakes were made that are now at risk of being repeated. Don't worry, Ian. I'm not making the same mistakes again. No, you're making, you're making all new ones. Actually, the latest news confirms at least one mistake from my list is being repeated. I'm not expecting greatness from the new movie, but I'm also not jaded enough to assume that a new movie will suck. For me, a new movie just means a chance at a new enjoyable dinosaur flick. They're dinosaurs, wow enough. In this video, I'm going to talk about 10 mistakes the upcoming movie needs to avoid repeating, and a new mistake that I hope they won't make, even though people are literally asking for it. All just in my opinion, of course. For starters, the new Jurassic era absolutely must not repeat the biggest mistake that Dominion made. Now, Dominion made a lot of mistakes, and several will make it into this video, but I did not hate Jurassic World Dominion as much as the popular consensus currently is. Even though it's overstuffed with dinosaur set pieces and structurally it's more akin to a cheesy video game hopping from level to level than a coherent and well-paced movie, I still think it's fun, although my opinion of it has dropped since my initial reviews. But I think the biggest mistake Dominion makes is how it wastes potential. Fallen Kingdom's entire reason for existing was getting dinosaurs onto the mainland, get them into civilization, something the franchise gave us a glimpse at in 1997. Dominion completely squandered the efforts made by Fallen Kingdom by shipping the dinosaurs and the action off to a new remote location, Biosyn Valley. The movie promised us dinosaurs in our world, but only delivered with a couple of montages and the Malta scene. The new Jurassic era should commit to the dinosaurs terrorizing cities and suburbias and really giving us something new rather than retelling the same story. Because of that, another mistake I don't want them to repeat is for them to shoehorn Rexy into the story again. I know she's very, very popular, so this might be controversial, but in my opinion, just let her live out her days in Biosyn Valley with the Buck and Doe Rex. I don't want the new movies to come up with a convoluted way of dragging her into the storyline. And the same goes for Blue and Beta. Bringing them back is going to be so forced and is going to limit the freedom that this new era should make the most of for telling a new story. If they're going to reuse dinosaurs from past installments, I'd much prefer to finally see the return of the Spinosaurus and scary Velociraptors, which I will talk more about later. Speaking of Blue and Rexy, the franchise has turned these dinosaurs into heroes who come in and save the day. Dinosaurs are animals, something that the original trilogy explored very well. It's the Jurassic World trilogy in a post-MCU world that tried to give us good guy and bad guy dinos, and frankly, I think it dumbs down the material. I mentioned in the intro, paint by numbers gone wrong, and I think the hero dinosaur concept is one of the examples for that. Trying and almost exclusively failing to recapture the success of that first movie has led to Universal looking at Jurassic Park mathematically trying to figure out a blueprint they can keep reusing. I'll tell you the problem with the scientific power that you're, that you're using here. Uh, it didn't require any discipline to attain it. You know, you read what others had done and you, and you took the next step. You didn't earn the knowledge for yourselves, so you don't take any responsibility. You stood on the shoulders of geniuses uh, to accomplish something as fast as you could, and before you even knew what you had, you, you patented it and packaged it and slapped it on a plastic lunchbox, and now you're selling it. You want to sell it. Well... Part of that blueprint has become a dinosaur must save the day and take out the villain. Because in the original movie, at the last minute whim of Steven Spielberg, Rexy came in at the end and saved the characters from the Velociraptors. Interestingly, Jurassic Park 3 is the only movie in the franchise that resisted rehashing that trope. So as odd as it may be to say, let Jurassic Park 3 be a role model. 
In a similar vein as no more hero dinosaurs, I also don't want more villain dinosaurs, like the Indominus Rex hunting for sport and the awful laser-guided killing machines in the form of Indoraptor and Atrociraptor. I swear to god, if I see them whip out a laser pointer in the new movie, I will walk out of the theater. Just as I don't want to see Rexy, Blue and Beta return, I also don't want them to bring back any human characters. Through my nostalgia goggles, I really enjoyed seeing the original three return in Jurassic World Dominion. It was pure fan service, and I'm not immune to that. But fan service can be enjoyable and be a mistake at the same time. Like fast food. The franchise needs to stop this obsession with digging up the past. And yes, I do see the irony there. Time and time again, it is underestimated just how crucial character work is to the success of the original movie. You can't recapture that by simply parading around the same actors. Bryce Dallas Howard has said in an interview that she would be open to returning to the franchise if asked, which immediately got fans theorizing that she could or should return. But even she says in that same interview that the franchise could expand to something greater through the eyes of new characters. And I agree. The fifth mistake they shouldn't make again, human villains. Throughout the franchise, the human antagonists in the film have steadily gotten worse and worse, rolling down the spectrum towards mustache twirling villain. Again, with the notable exception of Jurassic Park 3. Of course, Dodgson takes the cake by casually causing global catastrophe, destroying crops worldwide and willingly letting the situation spiral towards a worldwide food crisis. All the while snacking on peanuts or something. <laughs> Again, it's the paint by numbers mistake. They liked the message from the first movie and novel of how human greed and arrogance leads to shit hitting the fan. Instead of subtly crafting that into a new character that can unravel the best laid plans, they looked at that and thought, oh, we're going to write a character who wants to control global wheat production and his selfish actions threaten the survival of the human race. I understand that movies benefit from the drama of having an antagonist. I'm not saying, new movie, please don't have an antagonist. I'm saying, please don't have a villain. Mistake number six is leaving the source material untapped. It's unfair to say it was a mistake of the original film to not use every single scene from the novel, because adaptations don't work that way. The mistake is that the sequels that followed left gems from the novels unmined. There are awesome scenes in both novels that can be lifted out and put into new context. For example, one of my favorite scenes is from the start of the first novel, when a nurse goes to check on a newborn baby and finds that a couple of Procom Signathas have gotten into the crib and ate the baby's face. That is such a horrifying scene and horrifying mental image that can easily work as a standalone scene in the new Jurassic era. Another example of this is Nedry's death. It played out very differently in the movie than it did in the novel. Give that gruesome death of being lifted by the head and having their guts spill out to another character. Comment down below which other scenes from the novel you would love to see make it to the big screen after all. Speaking of gruesome death scenes, the franchise needs to stop trying to be an action series. Instead, it should return to its horror slash thriller roots. Bayona tried to take it back to horror with the back end of Fallen Kingdom. Personally, I don't think he pulled it off, but I appreciate the vision. But other than that, the franchise has very much become a franchise of action movies with big spectacle, like the MCU, like Fast and Furious. The horror vibes of the original, shining especially in the kitchen scene, but also in the lost world with the tall grass scene is, I think, a much better atmosphere in which to pit humans against dinosaurs. I think action works well when the sides are balanced and there can be an even fight. Human versus dino is not an even fight, so let us as viewers feel scared. Unfortunately, it looks like the new movie is confirmed to be making this mistake. While working on this video, a Deadline article revealed that director David Leitch is in talks for directing the next Jurassic installment. Leitch is known for directing action movies like John Wick, Atomic Blonde, Bullet Train, and, concerningly, the Fast and Furious spin-off, 
Hobbs and Shaw. While he is described to be in early talks, so it's far from set in stone, the fact that they are considering an action movie director says a lot about the intended genre of the movie. Another action blockbuster. This squashes my hope that the new era will veer away from action and back into more horror and thriller vibes. If you want to stay up to date on Jurassic news and join in on discussions like this, consider subscribing to the channel. And still on the topic of death and feeling scared, a mistake the new movie absolutely should not make is not having the balls to kill characters other than the bad guys getting their dinosaur comeuppance in the finale. Deaths like Gennaro's, Arnold's, Eddie's and Udeski's are needed to raise the stakes and make it feel like the characters are actually in danger. In fact, I would suggest they go one step further than they have in the earlier movies and kill actual main characters. Like kill off the equivalent of an Ian Malcolm in a scene like this rather than letting him live. That creates a kind of Game of Thrones mentality for your viewers where just because the actor's name is on the poster doesn't mean they will survive. This is a little side tangent, but I almost feel like the backlash that happened in response to Zara's death in Jurassic World made them a little hesitant to kill off more good guys. Second to last mistake they should not repeat is overstuffing the movie with dinosaurs. Dominion crammed in so many species that they were cannibalizing each other's screen time. I think fewer species, but dedicating more time to each works much better. Jurassic Park was low on species and low on dinosaur screen time, instead using a lot of its runtime to build suspense and develop characters, and that's what I think the franchise should try to recreate, rather than this trend of trying to outdo itself with more and bigger dinosaurs than ever before. The last mistake I don't want them to repeat before I talk about the new mistake that I hope they won't make is probably the most personal. In the original trilogy, the Velociraptors were the scariest dinosaurs. They always felt like the main threat to me. The World Trilogy completely neutered them, and I'm not a fan of that. I need the new Jurassic era to make Velociraptors terrifying again. We've seen in promotional material for Dominion that the Velociraptors from Sorna have made it onto the mainland, so I would love to see those become the main threat in the new movie. So that's 10 old mistakes that I hope they don't repeat. There's also a new potential mistake that I really don't want them to make. When the news was announced that a new movie is in the works, there was a recurring comment. Some people hope for a reboot for the new movie to go back to the original novel and start over. I fundamentally disagree with this want, so much so that it baffles me that anyone could genuinely ask for this. I think it would be the biggest mistake the franchise could make, and it's the only thing that would completely kill my excitement for it. While the original Jurassic Park was not 100% faithful to the novel, like I said earlier, I think it's a near perfect movie. And I say near perfect only because of some tiny continuity errors, and sometimes you see strings or a hand groping a velociraptor butt, and the original Nedry death from the novel would have been even more awesome. In spite of that, it is a masterpiece of a movie and I think one of the best adaptations from page to big screen. I have zero faith that they can make a better Jurassic Park movie than the one we've already had for 30 years. Because of that, I have no interest in watching them try to remake it and put themselves in direct competition with a masterpiece that has stood the test of time for the past three decades. I also think that a reboot wastes all the potential that the franchise has been building towards. Narratively, we're finally at a place where if we move forward, there is hope that they can take the Jurassic franchise into a new era in a satisfying way. Concerningly, for me personally, the new Deadline article does call the upcoming Jurassic feature a reboot. However, I think they have a very loose interpretation of the word. I think and hope that with reboot, they are just referring to the fact that none of the previous cast is expected to return. As production picks up, we'll soon have more information on the cast and the plot. So fingers crossed and stay tuned. Let me know in the comments down below what your wishes are for the continuation of the franchise. Thank you so much for watching, liking, subscribing, and until next time, let's hope it's good. <laughs>